Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for uh, listening to my presentation. Uh, my apologies uh, and regret that I couldn't be there uh, in person. Uh, here I have a, a quick comparison between uh, what I'm calling media-based modulation versus legacy traditional methodomodulation, uh, which I'm referring to as source-based because it's based on modulating an RF signal prior to transmission um, and uh, at the source level. Uh, so the media base, the main idea is that the information is embedded in the variation of the RF channel external to the antenna in the sense that the environment close to the transmit antenna is modified by a small modification to RF properties like mu epsilon sigma of the environment close to the antenna uh, we can essentially create a totally different propagation path due to the multipath effect and uh, this will result in something totally different to be received at the receiver side. So this um, randomness and richness of what we receive will bring a lot of benefits. Uh, one first benefit is that the information over multiple receiver antenna will be additive. This is similar to MIMO but we don't need to have multiple transmit antennas. So, so the same identity of the information uh, will be there if, uh, even if we use a single transmit antenna. And with a single transmit antenna and K receive antenna, we have an additional benefit compared to a K by K MIMO. That in a K by K MIMO, the channel matrix is usually non orthogonal, which essentially results in a having dependency between the noise over the received dimension and uh, in this case the channel the noise added to the received signal is has just an identity uh, matrix and uh, elements are IID and Gaussian. Another benefit, second benefit is the inherent diversity that we have in signaling over a static slow fading channel which I'm referring to it as constellation diversity and um, this essentially comes uh, from the fact that we do not get stuck with bad channel condition with deep fades. Deep fades, bad channel condition and good channel condition all happen and contribute to constructing one uh, random constellation and the distance between the points of that constellation which at the end of the day will determine the performance uh, will be something that uh, essentially uh, enjoys the benefit of good channel condition, bad channel condition uh, in spreading the constellation points and having a um, larger distance. So then and also uh, this inherent diversity which essentially converts the channel into an AWGN channel, so the mm, fading is gone. Uh, this also this diversity doesn't come at the cost of sacrificing the rate because in MIMO system, so we can it's well known that uh, we can sacrifice the multiplexing gain to obtain additional diversity. And um, as we will see, this feature essentially converts the ready fading channel into an AWGN channel with the uh, average energy um, received um, what essentially average energy received over one constellation will be the same as the statistical average energy of the fading uh, statistic and will have a minor loss in capacity due to the randomness of the constellation point. Now here I have some um, uh, figures hopefully clarifying uh, the concept. Uh, so here I have uh, we see that this rabbit is changing the channel in some sense uh, by representing the sign 5 uh, outside the RF source or, or outside that light source. And um, so this uh, is essentially the idea of media base that we keep the source shining, the source, the RF cap, just 
send the carrier either with a constant magnitude or with simple modulation so in the form of signing the ch um, changing the sign of the carrier and rolling the changing the changing the role of i and q to obtain symmetrical constellation which essentially uh, this feature enables us to uh, send uh, two additional bits per complex co con co complex uh, constellation cons complex dimension uh, by that simple modulation of sign change and exchanging the role of i and q but then beyond that the modulation across the radial direction which is uh, the different levels of uh, signal energy is obtained by that uh, changing the RF channel outside the antenna and uh, one point that I would like to emphasize is that in RF uh, domain one of the oldest topic uh, is the RF beam forming and also in the context of beam forming there are methods uh, for uh, doing the beam forming using some parasitic elements external to the antenna and this shouldn't be confused with what I'm discussing here because in RF beam forming the objective is entirely in focusing the energy uh, without any attention to additivity of information over receive antennas or um, diversity uh, or anything like that so uh, you know there is really no 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 link between this two so here I have um, a conf uh, structure of the signaling scheme so because we have a time varying system linear system potentially the spectrum can increase so by shaping the power spectrum of the transmit signal uh, we are making sure that this doesn't happen and also because equalization generally exploits the, the fact that the channel is fixed uh, traditional methods for equalization here we are intentionally changing the channel so equalization will become an issue but one um, obvious solution is that if the impulse response of the channel is of length d we do one transmission and then followed by enough period of silence uh, such that uh, the channel memory flushes out and unlike the traditional system this additional receive signal in this case span independent dimensions so we don't lose the multiplexing gain by such a weight now here I have a closer look at um, the method of modulation so the index of the data M comes in select the channel configuration which results in a vector HM of over the uh, receive antennas so there are L such vectors which corresponds to a constellation with L points points are random with Gaussian distribution component and are K dimensional K is 2 times Q and Q is the number of receiver antennas so the noise is additive white Gaussian so the expression for mutual information will be similar to what we have for the general additive white Gaussian noise channel and um, as I said these vectors HM are L points L vectors of dimension K over a space of uh, K uh, Q receive antennas and they are contaminated by a vector of noise Z which the component of Z are white and IOID consequently tends to the capacity of uh, an AWG underlying AWG channel so the main consequence of this feature that the variance of this um, additional noise goes to zero uh, is the following that if you consider a slow fading channel for which statistical average of the fading gain per receive antenna is one so standard uh, ready fading channel and we use one single transmit and R and Q receive antennas under this situation mutual information averaged over different realizations of a constellation with L points because each of these constellations some of them will have higher mutual information some of them will have lower but because they all have some form of uh, typical behavior they will not be too 
uh, different from uh, each other and indeed when L goes to infinity all of this um, approach the capacity of uh, uh, what is achievable with uh, Gaussian random code book and the overall capacity uh, approaches the capacity of 2 Q Q is the number of antennas parallel AW gen channel H with unit energy and they are um, noises are independent now, to just show the, mm, how accurate uh, this uh, bounding is, here I have a situation that the number of constellation point is 256. The uh, system is SISO, so we have Q equal to 1, meaning 1 transcend 1 receive antenna. So this top curve is um, actual simulation, meaning that many, many constellations are randomly generated. With ra 256 points each uh, over two dimension and points have uh, distribution of constellation points are random and constellation points are independent of each other and the mutual information is computed for and assuming that that but that particular selection of constellation points is used to as a constellation over a channel with an AWGN uh, noise and with this particular SNR along this axis so we get this um, essentially the top curve um, the solid blue sh is the simulation. Now the red curve shows um, the when we use that bound that uh, by ma by that quantization noise that I mentioned, and the simplified uh, expression, which essentially showed that uh, the noise goes to zero uh, with uh, one over L divided by um, uh, to the power of uh, two divided by k. Uh, so the essentially the it's fairly accurate uh, it's a fairly accurate um, approximation fairly accurate bound. now here I have um, the situation showing the benefits due to inherent diversity um, that I mentioned before that we have in a single constellation that both good and bad channel condition all contribute to one constructing one constellation so I have a 256 point qualm, the solid blue curve is a 256 point qualm with um, AWGN and uh, the capacity of it, the mutual information with uniform, uh, using the constellation point uniformly is represented here. Then I have um, random constellation with points that are um, Gaussian generated with IID Gaussian um, essentially components and uh, 10,000 of such 256 points random constellation are generated and the mutual information of those are computed and these values and this line here this small red line show the deviation so how far the l smallest mutual information and the largest mutual information of those 10,000 realization uh, the span of it and as you see there are two observations here one is that first of all it's pretty close to the case of 256 qualm and the more important point is that the variation is very minor it's very small of those um, you know 10,000 constellation realization they are more or less uh, all of them are uh, close to each other. So here I have uh, this particular point of uh, 15 dB opened. So this red line is opened here. Something similar to that red line is opened here. So as you see, uh, the uh, average rate is 4.8 and by having a 1 dB margin from 15 dB to uh, f uh, 16 dB essentially uh, we have made sure that none of these 10,000 constellation uh, has um, ha worst case performance uh, still uh, satisfy the rate requirement that they have so the outage probability is something like 10 to the power of minus 4 here now if you want to have an outage probability with 1 dB margin, we get an outage probability in the range of 10 to the power of minus 4. So if you want to have an outage probability of 0.1 in a slow fading channel, instead of the 15 dB, I had to transmit 30 dB 
meaning that 15 dB margin instead of 1 dB. And uh, for an SNO, for a probability of outage of 1%, we need uh, 25 dB margin. Similarly, for a probability of outage of uh, uh, 10 to the power of minus 3, we need uh, 35 dB margin versus, versus uh, compared to 1 dB uh, that the media based uh, has. Now, another benefit that I mentioned is that the dimension, uh, we have the energy harvesting property that MIMO system have, meaning that when I send E unit of energy in a MIMO, effectively I receive K units of energy. K times E, K times more. So we have the same feature. We send E units of energy over each receive antenna. We have essentially um, a unit E unit of energy contributing to rate. Rates is additive, and then we have an additional benefit. We have a bene benefit that the noise over receive antennas are uh, orthogonal to each other. Essentially, dimensions are orthogonal, and noises are independent, and IID. So, having the situation that in the MIMO the coordinate system, um, the, the metrics is not orthogonal, can be translated into saying that effectively at low SNR, a MIMO system is not uh, K by K MIMO, is indeed equivalent to a single dimension, starting with uh, the largest eigenvalue, which offers a saving in energy of the largest eigenvalue of the Richard metrics, which is the slope of this curve. Uh, and the eigenvalue of the visual material, the largest of it, uh, when you compute the accepted value, is limited to 4. But in the case of uh, media-based, right away from the beginning, we have the uh, slope of the, in sh it's shown in the paper, that it will be equal to the sample mean of the energy of the constellation points, and on the average will be k, average over many constellations. Now, so we can also have uh, something in the sense of selection gain, meaning that if you have um, X number of constellation points available and we are transmitting a lower rate, we can select a subset of constellation with be better performance. And here I have um, a rule that selects the constellation point. If you remember, I mentioned that the uh, slope of the uh, mutual information at SNR equal to zero it's shown in the paper that is equal to the sample mean of the average of the constellation point uh, over, the, over that specific constellation. So based on this, if we select the subset of constellation point that have the highest energy, essentially means that we have selected uh, the constellation to give the largest slope at SNR equal to zero. And here I have this green curve is the 256 QAM. Uh, the blue curve is the optimum, meaning that depending on the rate, we select a subset of constellation point. Uh, and the red one is when we just simply select the highest uh, energy point. A subset, but the subset which has the highest energy. So uh, as you see at the beginning, essentially mm, uh, to a good part, it completely uh, is identical to the optimum. And after that, this is at the lower SNR, and after that, it just uh, has a small uh, difference. And generally, at low rate, gives better performance than 256 one. Please don't forget that this, all of these constellations are assumed to that the constellation points are used with equal probability. Now, as I said, uh, for, um, uh, my, uh, for a media base, the slope will be equal to the number of uh, dimension, which is um, for two dimension is two, four dimension is four, k eight dimension is eight. And for a k by k MIMO, the slope at SNR equal to zero uh, is the largest eigenvalue of that particular realization of the channel metrics. And the statistical average of this largest eigenvalue of the short metrics goes to four. So when we apply the selection gain, the slope further increases for media base instead of sample mean of the uh, energy of the constellation it will be the uh, maximum energy of points of the particular constellation and uh, the for example for the size of case of uh, one antenna this increases with 
uh, as log of L. Um, some, something similar to multi diversity game that you have over the, for the range. So here I have some comparison with ergodic capacity. So you know it's not a fair comparison, although media base is showing um, you know noticeable uh, or significant improvement. Uh, but generally, uh, this is a channel that is has fading, and media base shows its benefit over sloping. And here I have some comparison with outage capacity. Um, again, um, showing uh, significant um, performance improvement uh, for um, the media base. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. And please uh, uh, kindly contact me if you have any questions.